Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to Sam's and I uh, and, uh, and ours uh, almost weekly webcast, where we methodically go through the risk management myths that uh, Doug Hubbard and Sam Savage put together, and we try and dispel uh, one at a time. And before we go get into that, we had received some interesting questions on YouTube. Um, so, uh, Slavic, thank you very much for posting them, and I think we'll address them quickly. Let me read the questions to to Sam, spend a little bit of time uh, talking about that, and then we'll switch to our next uh, floor, or, um, next uh, lame excuse, number six. So, first question, um, and I'm going to paraphrase. Um, Sam, can you please explain a little bit more what do you mean when you say risk is in the eye of the beholder? Right. So is there a risk that IBM stock will go down this afternoon? Heck no. I've shorted IBM. The risk for me is that IBM will go up. Risk is in the eye of the beholder. Is I, is I, do we know the price of IBM stock? No. It's uncertain. Okay. Uncertainty is just a feature of the universe. And we may know we may not know what the uncertainty is, we may have different opinions about it, but for sure risk is always associated with a beholder. The risk of pardon my dog. This is five podcasts. It's, it's all right, can barely right. hear it. So so using the word risk by itself is a big mistake, right? There is the risk that my short position on IBM will get hammered because IBM went up. <laughs> or there's the risk that my long position in IBM will get hammered because IBM goes down. So we've always got to talk about whose risk. And if you have a large organization with a bunch of stakeholders, then you have lots of stakeholders with, with, all, with their own risk. Right. So um, yeah. that's the first question. And then I think he had another good question as well. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I'll, I'll I'll read out the second question in a moment. Um, so oh, uh, wait, I, I, let's go back. Let's go back just a little bit, sure. because that's just one level of risk is in the eye of the beholder. There, there are also all the other. It, it, it's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. There is your own risk attitude about what kinds of risks you want to take, given that we both have a short position or a long position in IBM, right? And, and, and the way to distinguish that, I think it's very important, the way to distinguish that is, Alex, I'm going to flip a coin. If it's heads, you win 10 euros. If it's tails, you get nothing. So on average, you're going to get five euros, right? And I say, Alex, would you walk away from the game if I gave you one euro? So that's 10% of the winnings, right? And everyone's going to have a different answer, but what's your answer? You probably want me to flip the coin to get zero or 10 euros as opposed to just walk away with one euro. But that's just my guess. Is that what you do, Alex? Okay. Um, I, I, I'm a pretty risky person. Yes, yeah, so you would life. do that. Okay. Now I'm going to change this game just a little bit. It's a million euros, but I'm paying you 100,000 euros to walk away from the game. So it's the same deal. And and I flip the coin. Heads, you win a million euros. Tails, it's zero. So it's a half a million euros on average. But I say, here's one tenth of the prize, 100,000 euros to walk away from the game. Now we're about to find your real risk editor. Do you, you, you want me to flip the coin or not, Alex? Um, I, uh, I'll i need to think about that because that is actually a tough choice. Yeah, that because, okay, what if I change it to a billion euros <laughs> and I offer you a tenth, I offer you a hundred million to walk away from the game. I think I know which one you do there, but yeah. you see, you, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, some wino on the street, they're all going to have different levels at which they're going to go for the cash. Mm -hmm. 
another level at which risk is in the eye of the beholder. And I believe the, the guy asking the question brought up even more stuff from behavioral economics about the way we think about risk. All this exactly. means is it's risk is murky and should never be used. The word should not be used without a bunch of qualifiers. Uncertainty is easy. You know, will an asteroid either strike where I live or where Alex lives before the podcast is done? You know what? I cannot estimate the probability, but there's a chance it'll happen. From my perspective, it is not a big enough chance so that we should cancel the podcast and I should go dig a hole and climb into it. Agree. Okay, so thank you. I think we, we, with the second and third edition, I think you've made a very comprehensive answer uh, to that question covering all the bases. Let me read out the second question and I kind of I put it up on the screen. Um, so uh, Slavic is referring to a figure 8.7 in uh, Flow of Averages book. Oh, yeah. By the way, if uh, anyone watching us and you haven't read the Flow of Averages book, highly recommend it because it's you know, one of the best risk management books out there. Um, and uh, that's been out for what now, 11 or 12 years? Yeah. yeah. And of course, the new book is Chancification. And at flawofaverages.com, if you go there and you go to books, John Wiley, the publisher of The Flaw of Averages, has offered a 30% discount where there's a discount code where you can buy the paperback for a 30% discount, I believe, if, if uh, at a page where you can buy the Kindle version of, of, uh, of, uh, of Chancification, the new book. Yep. which is pure for the flaw of averages. So if, if you're planning to buy the flaw of averages, you definitely want to, you definitely want to get the discount you can get at flawofaverages.com. Thank you. Thank but you let's go that. back to this question. Yep. Um, so he's saying two graphs on the left side, there's the running averages of, for the sprinter. And uh, on the right, there's some reciprocal. Yeah. And he's, yeah. he's asking why yeah. is reciprocal introduced? Yeah. Yeah. What's the Correct. idea? So here we go. Oops. So let me let me start out with what what the graph is is of. Aside from dice, my favorite uncertainty is a spinner that goes from zero to one. This uncertainty is equivalent to the RAND statement in Excel. It turns out to be the building block of all simulation. It's very important. So I'm showing two graphs. One graph is the running average as I do more and more spins. What does that look like? The average you see is going to be 0. 0.5. And the graph, not very big, but you can see over time, it converges to 0. 0.5. In other words, I take the first spin by itself, then the sum of the first two spins divided by two, the sum of the first n spins divided by n, and I run it up to n equals a thousand, I get this very smooth curve. Mm -hmm. What I'm showing here is that the more simulations you run, the more trials you run, the closer you get to the true average. Yeah, but, and that's due to the central limit theorem, but there are some distributions that kick the central limit theorem in the teeth. It doesn't work for absolutely everything. And an example of something it doesn't work for is I take the number one and I divide it by the number on the spinner. Mm -hmm. And well, if the number on the spinner becomes extremely close to zero, that number becomes extremely big. And that distribution, I think it may be called the Cauchy distribution, and it has no variance. It's just too, it's an infinite variance or something. 
And if you do the same experiment with that distribution, it doesn't converge. So here, now here's oops, the picture on the on the right. Okay, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. running along, and then all of a sudden it takes a huge jump. You can at the very end it takes a humongous jump at about one thousand, which means that the like like the nine hundred and eightieth trial mm -hmm. was bigger, a lot bigger than the sum of the previous nine hundred and seventy nine trials. Right. Tom Keelan explained what this distribution really means in a sense. Um, if you took, you put a machine gun on a rotating turntable, aim it at a wall, and spin the thing while it's spraying bullets, the distribution of hits on the wall would be a Cauchy distribution, which of course would go out to infinity in both directions, right? But it's 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 way nastier than a normal. A normal distribution has a finite variance, but this thing doesn't. Okay, anyway, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. what that picture is about, just to warn you yep. that there are situations in simulation where the results will not converge, okay? But in those Absolutely. those are so crazy. I mean, I don't know what to do anyway. It's like, you know, it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be modeling uncertainty. So so um should we should we move on to uh Yeah. So thank you very much for answering um those two questions. And Slavik, I hope that helped. Uh you know, keep asking questions. Um Tom is asking, will this video be recorded um for later view? Yes, of course. It will be available on both LinkedIn uh, and YouTube. Um, and it will stay there forever in our um, uh, playlist called SIP, <laughs> SIP Math. For the time being, I called it SIP Math. I probably need to switch and it to way, change, I, change scale. I think the name, listen, I think the name we're gravitating for here is that there's going to be a show called Chance Talk. <laughs> Chance Talk. Oh, yeah, I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the, uh, the name. Um, so on the Risk Academy channel, um, Chance Talk, uh, the playlist, and this is the fourth or fifth uh, video that we're recording. That means the recordings of all the previous videos are still available. And um, Tom and everybody else, I encourage you to watch it. Exactly. And I, and I, I want to say a word about Chance Talk. So, um, you know, what, if you think of the real estate of words, you know, words like a uh, and the, it very very common and like i think if you owned the the dot com that would be worth a lot of money right and you know the word chance is a very common common word and yet if you go to the the chance neighborhood think of it as part of the city right it's underbuilt over there. There's not a lot of real estate, mm -hmm. which meant that I was able to buy chancecalc.com for $9.95. Kind of amazing, right? Mm -hmm. few years ago. And then I started thinking about, ooh, it's the age of chance. Well, ageofchance.com was taken. Chanceage.com was available for $9.95. What can you say? Bronzeage.com was $50,000. So I'm just saying, yeah, chance, yeah. chancetalk.com was $9.95. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, there we go. Um, let me, so, let me share, share your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so now, lame excuse number six. My boss will still ask for a single number for two reasons. You need to order a single number of items for inventory. And you can't do calculations with probability distributions. Well, actually, you can, because that's what chance count does. And that's what SIPMath does. And that's what Monte Carlo simulation does. 
but I think we should start with A, you know. So Let, let's, start, let's start with the first part. Yeah, yeah. Because you have a really good demonstration for that. Yeah, so Doug says, the order is exact, but demand is uncertain. Models show that the best decision is usually to purchase either more or less than the average demand, depending on the penalties of missing the mark, okay? And actually, my first comment should have been, amen. <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate that in a second. But I also say, in the chance age, when the boss asks for a number, you say, what do you want it to be? I'll give you the chance of meeting your goal. All right? And I'm sure that many of the viewers remember the old... Uh, the, the, the accounting joke where the company's hiring a new accountant. It's a very old joke, right? And so they bring in the first accountant. They say, what's two plus two? Accountant says four. They bring in the second guy to interview, you know, what's two plus two? Oh, it must be a trick question. They say five. They bring in the third one. What's two plus two? What do you want it to be? <laughs> so anyway, um, so so let's let's now talk about a decision based on an uncertainty and mm -hmm. so what, what I've got here is say we're <coughs> buying out some close out inventory we believe this is a one shot deal you're you're going to you're going to buy this stuff and you sell it like you know in in a month or you throw it out and everybody agrees that the average demand is 100,000 units mm -hmm. there's no disagreement about that but it's uncertain. So uh, this says cost of capacity, but if you're building it, but this really means the cost per unit of buying it up front. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's 30 bucks a unit. So if you buy, if you, if you buy a hundred thousand of them, it's going to be $3 million. Right. Mm-hmm. You buy more, it'll cost more than $3 million less. But that's sunk cost. That's a capital investment. You know, you're stuck with it. And then the selling price, we're going to say, is also certain. And, and we're going to say that's 40 bucks. So no uncertainty there. Only uncertainty in the demand. Okay. The blue here is how many you're going to order, basically. And so the boss comes in. Well, we, we order 100000 The boss comes in and says, what's profit going to be? And, and, and. I mean, today you say, well, I don't know, boss, because I don't know what demand is going to be. And the boss says, give me a number. And you say, because um, we're not in the chance age yet. Uh -huh. You say, well, uh, you, we all agree, right, boss, that the average demand is 100,000. Yes, the boss signs an affidavit. I agree the average is 100,000, but that it's uncertain, right? And you say, well, that's it's, if you need a number, because first you say, I can't give you a number because I don't know what demand will be. And then you say, well, look, OK, you're insisting on a number. Then I'm going to plug in the average demand. And, you know, we get revenues of four million total cost of three million. Our profit is one million. And remember, it's a one shot deal. You have to order this stuff and live with the with the mm -hmm. outcome. So um, great. Uh, Everyone thinks we're going to make a million bucks. Now, let me use chance calc to, to find out what's really going to happen. And so to will, do that. Will, will it upset the boss, Sam? Will it upset the boss? Well, let's find out. <laughs> um, I tell you what, let's stop. Stop sharing my screen for a second while I run out somewhere else. Just, just thank you. I'm going to run out uh, to. 
um, while you're doing that, um, ask questions. We, we are live, so we, we see your questions as they appear and we'll try and respond to them. If you're watching on YouTube, LinkedIn or Facebook, um, by all means, ask questions. Um, maybe tell a story about uh, your um, instance of coming across such lame excuses and uh, when some of your colleagues insisted on single point estimates instead of uh, chances. Good. Um, do you want me so to switch? Already, we, can, we can share again. So I'm actually out at the tutorial library page of, of Chance Calc. And here are a bunch of libraries of uncertainty that we're going to plug into the model as data. So here's the demand library. And I'm going to right click, copy the link, and then head back over to Excel. So I, I put the cursor in the demand cell. I bring up Chance Calc. I'm going to input the uncertainty as a SIP. That's a stochastic information packet. I'm going to use the data that's on the clipboard. It's product demand. I click OK. Uh-oh, what happened? Well, we're now in the multiverse. That is to say, the way to think of uncertainty is you could be in one of a thousand parallel universes. There's the first universe, the second universe, the third universe. Okay. And by the way, this is auditable data. I remember that the ninth parallel universe was pretty nasty. A demand of 66,000 results in a loss of 325,000, okay? But the multiverse contains the average as well, as in the flaw of averages. Brings me back here. Well, the first thing is, the boss says, you know, what? I say to the boss, the boss says, what's profit going to be? I say, what do you want it to be? Well, says, oh, I want it to be a, a million bucks. Okay, let's see what the chance of that is. What's the chance that we are greater than or equal to 1 million? And I put the cursor here, and I click the chance of whatever button, and I go to the formula. And I go to the target value and 50%. Oh, well, wait, what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is, let's go back to the, the individual trials. When the demand was low, we lost money or we didn't make much money. But let's go to the first trial, which was 141,000. Yeah, but sales was only 100,000 because the sales is the minimum of what you ordered, you know, and the actual. So that's where the flaw of averages is coming from. And so now the next thing you might say is, well, wait a minute. If I were to repeat this a thousand times, what would my average profit be? The way to think about this is you're 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 doing this in a thousand different planets or a thousand parallel universes. You're ordering a hundred thousand, but the demand is the same uncertainty. But you know we're looking at a thousand different demands that have an average of a hundred thousand over all the, mm -hmm. all the planets or universes. Okay, so I need to learn another key here. I hit the average button. Give me the average of this. Oh no, the average is only 600,000, right? And I'm sorry, boss, that's what it is. And, and by the way, I showed the boss the ninth trial. 
And suddenly the boss says, oh, my God, we could lose money. No one ever told us we could lose money because we were using averages. The chance mm-hmm. of losing money doesn't even show up. Well, what is the chance of losing money? Oh, well, let's put a less than sign there and a zero sign there. 16%. How do you like them apples, boss? Oh, my gosh. We thought this was a sure thing at a million bucks. Well, actually, the expected return is 600000 and we have a 16% chance of losing money. Why? Well, if, if you look closely at this little little graph here, of course, the maximum you can make is a, is a million bucks. That's the spike there because you ran out of material. Now, I don't know. Do we have pe- anyone wa- watching online here? Anyone? Uh, yes, we, we have we have Brian asking a question. Um, what quantity should we order to have an 80 percent chance of making 900,000 profit? Wow, what a great question! Uh, is that is hey, that something we can? So, we can so sure? let's look at it. Let's start looking at it this way. Um, first of all, there might be no amount that would give us an eighty percent chance of of a nine hundred thousand dollar profit. So let's let's take a look. Um. Well, no, just a second. Yeah, because because we have a 50 percent chance of a million. But let let's get as close as we can to answering Brian's question. But we're going to start out with um, just the question about this. Because I was running out of inventory, should I have ordered more? Right? That'd be an obvious. Well, obviously we should order more. Right? Sure. Let's because we ran out. So let's order 120,000, right? And what happens? Oh, no. Our average profit is now under 300,000. And our chance of losing money is 35%. Oh, my God, that's worse. Here, thank God for the control Z key in Excel. Boom, (laughs) I'm back. Maybe I should have ordered less. Okay, let's try ordering 80,000. Oh, that's good. My average profit is up and my chance of loss is down to 6%. Remember, Doug said, you probably aren't gonna wanna order the average amount (laughs) depending on the penalties. Well, the penalties in this case all have to do with these numbers up here, we don't can't go too far into the weeds, but okay. So now, what is the right thing to do? The right thing to do, because you can't do this in your head. The right thing to do is to run a bunch of experiments on how much to be ordered. So we will not just run a single simulation. You know, we're, we're going to run multiple experiments. And, and then I want to get back to, to, to see how close we can get to answering Brian's question. So this is a graph now where I simply have repeated the, the whole thing for a bunch of ordering decisions. 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, up to 120,000. And we're looking at two things here. We're looking at the chance, oh, excuse me, here's the <clears throat> average profit. We did it over and over. Mm-hmm. You'll notice the maximum average profit <clears throat> occurs at 80,000, and it's roughly $680,000 in average profit. Here's the chance of losing money. Now, the question is how much? should we order and it is a trick question so what do i mean by a trick question the amount to order is none of those numbers down there the question is question of how much to order is 
It depends. It depends on what? It depends on your risk attitude, which is how we started this session. It all fits together like a can of worms. So Alex, if you are risk taking, which you apparently are, because you didn't take the, the single euro when I offered you the coin toss. Yep. If you were risk taking, how, how many would you order? Um, I well, I I am risk taking, but I would still do the calculation and um, optimize for um, um, basically goal seek the number to order based on the parameters of uh, expected profit well, at eighty percent well, probability. Well, sure, but let, let's just assume you're not so you're not worried about losing money. Uh -huh. what, what would maximize your profit if you're not worried about losing money? That, okay, then I would order probably around eighty thousand. Yeah, so so that's what we have is uh, now. By the way, if, if we did it in more detail, we might see that it's really eighty two thousand or whatever. But at this scale, it looks like eighty thousand gives us the maximum profit. However, mm -hmm. maximum average profit. However, as we already saw. There is a six percent chance. It's it's hiding the chance, but trust me, there's a six percent chance of losing money. Yep. Okay. Now, what if you were very risk averse? What would you order? Well, anywhere below eighty thousand, basically. So as we work our way down, you're getting more and more risk averse, until way down here, your average profit is only is under five hundred thousand. That's four ninety one. And there's virtually no chance of losing money, maybe a 1% chance of losing money. So that between 50,000 and 80,000, they're all reasonable answers depending on your risk attitude. Yeah. Ah, what hap how about ordering more than 80,000? How would you define that? Um, so, well, that would be a risk seeking. Um, but you know what I would have would would do to make that decision? I would um, replace the average line, the average blue line, with maybe like a set of box plots. So it gives me that added comfort of um, you know of, of the volatility. So well, maybe well, you listen. You you certainly could do that, Alex. But but if this is all the information you have, then then going to more than 80,000 is just plain nuts yes. because you're getting with less yes. with greater risk. Yes. Who would do that, right? So, so, oh, but what's interesting is, what's interesting is that ordering the 100,000, which is what we were going to do in the land of the averages, is turned very out sub to be just plain nuts. Yes. Why on earth would you want to make would you want to make 600,000 on average? You're going to make 680,000 on average. Oh, 600,000, excuse me. You make 600,000 um, on average with what percent chance of losing money? I think it's like a 16% chance. No, yeah. Yeah. So who would, who would want to make $600,000 on average with a 16% chance of losing money when you can make 680,000 on average? with a 6% chance of losing money. No one. Yeah, well, unless it's a once-off and the upside and the distribution is skewed and the upside is huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that is, it is possible that if you're a desperado. Yes. Right. Uh, okay. And the box plots would help you show that. But to, to kind of summarize here, you may be aware of the movie, um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, you see, by looking at the multiverse, we're able to come up with the right with, with, with a more rational answer. I mean, this thing is nuts over here if you don't look at the multiverse. So I, I call this Dr. Savage and the Multiverse of Sanity. <laughs> yeah. Not madness. But now let's go back to Brian's question. So Brian said. You want to make nine hundred thousand at eighty percent. 
probability. Let's let's look at the chance of being less than nine hundred thousand. Okay. And this is sort of interesting. There is a chance. Oh, but wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of interesting. Brian wanted a 20% chance of being below 900,000. Yes. Well, the bad news, Brian, is you can't get there from here. But what's the best you can do? So. Here's a hundred percent chance of being less than than nine hundred thousand, and what happens is if we order ninety thousand, we end up with like a thirty five percent chance of being below nine hundred thousand, and then it starts going back up. So roughly speaking, Brian, let's think about it this way. Here's where you're risk seeking. You owe the mafia $900,000. You don't come up with that, you're dead. Well, you got to go for broke here, right? Because I don't like, you know, I hate this 100% chance of being dead. Um, if I order 90000 which is just plain nuts in for a normal person, if I order 90000 it looks like there's only a 35% chance of being dead. Oh, that's way better than a 100% chance of being dead. I'll take it, right? Welcome to the age of chance. But 20%, forget it. <laughs> you can't get there from here. So um, I, I, I think that kind of exhausts the, 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 the topic here. And... Um, so let, let's um, let, let's go back to the uh, flow of averages uh, website and the list. Um, the only thing I have I have to add um, yeah. uh, to to this comment is that most of the time we whenever we talk about uncertainty and risk, we operate with ranges, confidence intervals, and probability of X, you know, probability of something. Um, usually probability above zero or mm -hmm. probability of uh, um, um, above or below management forecast. So that's that's kind of that's the preferred way to communicate uh, information about uh, about risk. Um, and there are uh, there are instances, however, when a single number may be required for prioritization purposes. Or every, somebody insists on on having a, a single number. Um, I think the point Sam is making, and it's a very important point. Um, there are number of single estimates that you can pull out from the distribution, um, but it is the output of the distribution. You can put out the simulated average. You can see you can pull out simulated var. The value at risk, which is your 95th or 99th percentile, whatever the you know risk appetite within the company is, um, you can pull out um, percentage probability of achieving something or other a target. Uh, so you technically can give single numbers, but these single numbers are the outputs of simulations. They're not instead of simulations; they are that's because right. of the simulations. That that's right. I think the way to view it as this. You you really want to keep the uncertainty alive until the last minute. You know what? It's like quantum mechanics. You The world could be in all these states. And as soon as you observe it, you've kind of frozen. You, you don't know what state it's anymore. I mean, you, but you, you kind of resolve the situation. Well, that's if you if you look as soon as you look at a single number, well, then you've forgotten everything else. But you but you, you get to look at all these different aspects of it. Um, and then Use multiple aspects to make your decision. Make a chance-informed decision is the way I would put it. 
Exactly. And, and Alex, I must run to my next meeting. This is yes, always I fun. suspected I suspected Looking this much. Next week, I presume we're on next week. And I think that next week I'm going to introduce some new technology that we have now um, before we continue down the Yes, the, the list. we are very much looking forward to that. Um, thank you, everyone who participated. Ask your questions. We'll see them and respond to them next week. And uh, as for the 6B, I think we've just proved that wrong. We clearly showed that you can do calculations with probability distributions. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.